All right, continuing off from where I was talking about um, men of war. Basically, you got this APC that like shoots fire, and I'm like, I don't think that's part of World War II, um, you know, German uh, technology. For some reason, it just doesn't scream German technology to me. But um, men of war is, like I said, is a lot more authentic in the sense that your unit is it's really hardcore. Like your units have ammo and stuff. Like uh, if one of your units goes, uh, it runs out of ammo, we can't shoot, and you have to go around and you have to loot other corpses, like you can like, loot enemy corpses or allied corpses and take their ammo and take their guns. So you can equip your squad in whatever way you would want. Like uh, I was playing the Russian campaign and uh, like if you wanted uh, your squad, I would always switch out the, uh, the, uh, what's that? the, I think it's called like the DP-48 or something like that. It's the big Russian machine gun that kind of looks like it's got like a flying saucer for a drum for ammo. And I would always switch that out with the MG-42 because MG-42 was a better, uh, better machine gun. But if uh, I was playing the Germans, I would always switch out the MP-44 for the, the PPSH because that was a far superior submachine gun. So you can just do all these little crazy things like that. <clears throat> and also, I'm just playing through the campaign right now. And the campaign's pretty epic. It's a lot more epic and a lot more realistic than, say, Company of Heroes. I, <clears throat> just, um, uh, it, it really gives you um, a lot more breadth of options than, than say, the, comp the campaign of Company of Heroes did. While it's strictly linear, you just go through mission to mission to mission, but um, the battles that are a lot more, like, open, like um, the, the, the Battle of uh, Sevastopol, and uh, that battle was pretty epic. Like you have like you know hundreds and hundreds of units all fighting across his trenches, and there's explosions going on everywhere across this large front. You've got a limited amount of Russian dudes trying to hold out against endless waves of German tanks and infantry, and it's pretty freaking spectacular. A lot more like in Company of Heroes, you had like 30 guys on screen max, and like the men of war, there's hundreds. And at the same time, um, it also has a lot of offensive scenarios which are also equally as epic but then it has um squad based scenarios where you're just taking like four guys and uh attacking uh point a or, or getting these documents or, or doing this or doing that <coughs> yeah it's actually a lot more strategic than say in, in, in company of heroes because uh because you can like equip different weapons and because you can control directly where your guys shoot and when they use grenades and how many grenades they have and what kind of grenades they're going to have, what kind of guns they're going to use. All these things you can control and it makes a lot more strategic and uh, sim-esque, I guess, like a simulator experience. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Gotta clean my throat. And, um... So, Men of War is pretty incredible, and it's one of the best games I've played in a very long time, and I actually have to, I'm going to call out Dark Pathfinder, because he's the one who suggested this game to me, and it's it's pretty awesome. It's it's pretty spectacular. But at the same time, it, it doesn't beat Company of Pharaohs in a lot of respects. I think that, um, one, the voice acting is atrocious. It's the worst voice acting ever. The, the voice acting, the game was made in Russia, and the dub overs they have is just so bad. It just drags me out of the experience every time I hear one of these guys talk. It, it really almost is like a game killer. It's that terrible. It's the worst voice acting ever in like any game. I'm, I'm, willing, to, I'm willing to bet that it's, it's that bad. So if anyone actually knows that I can keep the English subtitles but change the dialogue to the native Russian, that would be very helpful because I can change it to Russian but then all the subtitles are in Russian and I don't have a good idea of what's going on. Also, um, soldiers in Men of War are a little bit more stiff than in Company of Heroes. Like in Company of Heroes, they were really dynamic, like uh, grenades would come and they would move and they would run and then, you know, they look up and then they would react to every single last bullet hit against their cover and they just looked and felt more like real life soldiers that were on the battlefield and in, in, in Men of War it's still like they still die from grenades and they still go to cover but they just feel a little bit more stiff and they feel a little bit more lifeless like they're not really there on the battlefield that they're kind of like your grunts to throw into the meat grinder almost 
Um, and also the graphics aren't as good as in Comedy of Heroes. And the explosions aren't as nice, but still the graphics and explosions are pretty nice in Men of War. But I actually do think Men of War is better than, than Company of Heroes. That's my, that's my verdict and my ramble about Men of War. But now, um, I didn't expect to take that long on games. Because I actually... Oh no! I put my paper. Here it is. I can't print it out. A bunch of questions because I've been very behind on my questions and very lazy in responding to them. And I thought that I'd just kind of um, gather up all the questions at once and respond to them in a single vlog because I believe that I'm a better orator than I am writer and I believe that uh, if, if you if I answer this question kind of speaking face to face it's a lot you get a lot better answer than if I were to just type like five words in the uh, what's it in the, in the YouTube messages. But anyway, I'm starting off with Scorpio 2040. Its subject line is Darkest of Days. It says Darkest of Days had the shittiest ending ever. I'm sure you'll be able to talk about how shit it is for a good two videos. And uh, I don't know, I'm not I'm not there yet. And that actually probably will tie with another message from Anthony Draft. And he says that uh, I've only got five missions left and I should tie them all together in a big long epic marathon and put them in just one giant video and I don't know if I can quite do that, I don't know if I have the capability to do that and I don't know if, the, know if I have the time to do that so I, I think big long epic darkest of days marathon is out and I'll just continue with the parts I didn't know it was that close to ending the game but um yeah I, I guess we'll see, I guess we'll see very soon the ending of darkest of days uh moving on uh, as a lot tube says, I liked your left all your left dead survival modes. Thank you. Uh, left dead two is coming out very soon. Um, something I'm very excited about. I did not pre-order it, and I'll tell you why. Because um, Left 4 Dead comes out two days before my birthday, and I'm pretty sure that someone will give me Left 4 Dead for my birthday. So I don't feel like it's necessary for me to go and pre-order it when uh, I'll probably be getting that as a present. I keep mentioning to everybody, and you know, if if you viewers want to want to get style on a present. There's actually two games. There's, there's uh, Modern Warfare 2 and Left 4 Dead that come out generally in the same city. So if one of you wants to say thank you on my 20th birthday, those are two very, very good um, presents. And then Rubik's Cubed he says blah, 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 blah. Um, he's talking about the whole... Uh, what's the guy's name? I'm actually on YouTube right now. Probably you can just go check it out. Um, Master... Free K or something created a video about uh, it was like a comment thing between me and Prince of Macedon and entitled like, Joseph Stalin versus Prince of Macedon and they sent each of us like a series of questions and I answered the questions and Prince of Macedon I just told them basically to fuck off and then that because of that he declared me the winner and there was this huge uproar and uh, the Rubik's Cube he came onto my page and started saying, you know, terrible things about Prince of Macedon and whatever and then um, then he's like basically sent me this big message saying that um, he's he's apologizing to me for uh, if I made if I, if he made me angry and no he didn't make me angry. Um, I'm just kind of apathetic to the whole thing. But actually um, I'll talk about that later is that I do have uh, something, uh, a kind of video that I'm, I'm hopefully going to film today and, and edit tomorrow. It's, it's kind of like this, con it's, it's kind of a tribute to this contest and to something else uh, Prince of Mastodon has said to me very recently. So I'm kind of creating a video around that and I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it and he'll enjoy it and, and I'm going to enjoy making it. But anyway, that's, that's coming uh, later. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Sorry, just like to make sure I know time it is. Fuck, I only got a minute before I gotta break this off. Alright, let's see if we can fit this last question in here and then uh, go into the third part. BrickDew25 says, Hi, Stalin. I am a fan, but I have a few questions. One, how much does recording equipment cost? Uh, my PC cost me $1,300. And uh, the headset I use, almost everything. It's a very, very good headset. It's got a coat hanger on it for some reason. But uh, it's this headset right here. It's where I do all my recording through this mic and it costs about $35 um, it's pretty good it's very good actually it's a lot better than for $35 uh, you really can't go wrong with that headset and that's the only cost you know minus the computer it makes me record and he says does every game have a different recording set 
No, I use the same programs, Fraps and Audacity, both of which are free if you want to record. And I, I just uh, start recording when I start up the game, and then when I press uh, record, and then I say Zanasbuchotavaji, and then I just cut off that second of silence and then sync them up, sync up my audio and my video stream so we can get both voice and audio. And then uh, third, it, what will it cost for these for these programs? Nothing, like I said. And fourth, what happened to your realms of hunting? Let's play. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the next part. So I'm just gonna wrap this up and start the next segment.